have any suggestions of like old films that I should watch? Oh man, kind of studyable. how long studyable. have you? Um, well, from anything. an acting perspective? Yeah, or like any, because like, my goal is to be able to try to do anything. So right. Be anywhere. No, 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 yeah, no, that's so. good. No, I, I would, okay, I can only speak personally. The movie uh, that, that, that where I went, that's how you perform comedy with Spinal Tap. When I saw Spinal Tap, I was like, that's how you perform comedy. You treat it like it's serious. You don't treat it like it's, it's funny at all. You don't try to be funny at all. You can be big and silly. Have you ever seen Blazing Saddles? Like Harvey Korman in Blazing Saddles <laughs> makes me laugh harder than anything in the world. <laughs> And he's so big, or like Gene Wilder and Young Frankenstein, <laughs> or Madeline Kahn and Young Frankenstein, or Blazing Saddles. Madeline Kahn is, is a genius. Yeah. Um, really but was. you really feel like in their eyes that they believe the things they're saying, you know? Um, Monty Python's another thing, the way Monty Python, all those guys play comedy. Do you think being funny or comedic acting can be taught? I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, just being honest, because I didn't think I was good at it and then kind of like had that kind of, you, I think earlier you said, do you have anybody give you, and I said no. When I went to Second City, I did have a teacher go, hey man, you're really good at this. Yeah. And I didn't think I was. I was like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I had no, I had very low self-esteem. <laughs> I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing. And um, so I don't know. I, I think you can make someone who's kind of, you know, you know what it is? If you watch, for me, I can only speak personally. And yeah. when I watch those things, you get out of it what you get out of it. And you're saying, I don't want to be able to do anything. You want to be your act, whatever. And you might watch those things. You might be an actress. You might watch those things. And suddenly, how it comes out of you is you write. And you can write those things. Yeah. And you go, oh, I didn't know I could write. Oh, I actually write. And, you, and, having, and being smart enough and, self, and, and open enough to go, well, I'll just, no, I'll write this stuff instead of. You know what I mean? Or actually, I can actually direct stuff. Like, you just have to be open to all those possibilities. I wanted to be a director. I wanted to be a writer. But then I be when I became open to the possibility of acting, suddenly it was like, oh, no, this is what you're good at. Right. You know what I mean? So, so something like UCB, not to diss UCB, but UCB is a school, a training school. Oh, I think it's great. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying you're, you're not. So before you ditch it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I want Amy Poehler after me. Um, yeah. But, you know, as you say, environmentally, that could be just a great opportunity for somebody. You totally. Know? Even Whether or not it's teachable, it's that environment. And you totally. throw yourself into the environment of L.A. and Second City. Totally. And, like and the nice thing about here, as opposed to L.A., is L.A., everyone, a lot, not everyone, but a lot of people I'm in the classroom with, they just wanted something for their resume that said, I took improv classes, so when they went in to audition for a commercial or whatever, it was like, oh yeah, the improv experience. But um, here it's really about, it's close to really kind of like what Chicago is. It's about learning it, yeah. the, and, and man, UCB, people there, that community is so great. My wife is a part of it. They're so, they're just, they're just fantastic. What if they threw a bag of money at you and said, let's do a movie of Stefan? I don't know if I would do it, because I kind of like it the way it is. Yeah. I think people think they want to see that, and then the minute they sit down, they go, we don't want to see this. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, man, anybody? No, you know, no yeah. I mean, I'm but not, you know what I mean? Here. It's like, yeah. I don't know. It's like, it's so hard because yeah. kids like it, but the thing about, so Chris Rock said, Chris Rock came up to me and goes, the thing I like about, I'm sorry. <laughs> do it, do it. I got a whole lap. Oh, right, dude, no, that's a good. The thing, I can't do Chris Rock. <laughs> I used to be able to do Chris Rock. I apologize. It's this right. is now a racial thing. We're all friends um, here. It's okay. The thing I like about... The thing I like... No. <laughs> uh, the thing I like... I'll do Tracy Morgan. No. Um, <laughs> Bill! Um, That's Tracy. Yeah. I got a rabbit! <laughs> um, does that make up for my bad Chris Rock impression? No, I'll shut up. I'll stop. I'm digging myself into a bigger hole. <laughs> um, uh, Morgan Freeman. Uh, no, um, <laughs> uh, Chris Rock said, the thing I like about Stefan is how sad he is. He's like, I like the sadness. He's so sad. He's like, <laughs> he goes, it makes me laugh. He goes, all the shit you're doing, I don't care. I just know that guy goes home and he sleeps in a, in a trash can. That's why we had the last one. I sleep in a garbage can. <laughs> but the line that got me uh, on last Saturday yeah. was, uh, have you seen... Which, okay, so I don't know if you guys know this, if you guys don't know, is that they write stuff on those cards I haven't seen yet. Yeah. And stuff on. So I don't know a lot of this. So I'm reading it and I think I know, and then suddenly there's a thing there that I haven't seen yet. Is that where you break a little bit sometimes? A little bit. 
<laughs> I didn't want to be rude. Yeah, yeah. Rude? No, I full on. But that's the only character you break in. I mean, really. Yeah, not really. Uh, I, I broke on the first Californians. And yes. I broke. Yes. And I broke a couple of times when Keenan does the the scared straight guy. Yeah. And I broke once. I, uh, I broke once in Herb Welch because I hit Kristen Wiig in the crotch with a microphone. But I, I I was supposed to do it like this, but instead I went like that. Oh. And she went. She made it so. No one heard it, but she made this noise. Kristen went like that, and I totally started laughing. Anyway, the the line that got me. That I hadn't seen yet was plus there'll be a special guest. Are you familiar with Blackula, the Black Dracula? <laughs> and I say, and, Fre and Seth goes, yes. I go, well, they, do you know they made a Jewish one? <laughs> and he says, what's his name? And John was good enough to put the name on the next card, so I couldn't read down. Right, right, right. So when they flipped the card over, I was expecting it to say like Jewish Acula or whatever, right. whatever. And instead, it said Sidney Applebaum. <laughs> And now Sidney Applebaum is, that alone is hilarious. Because that alone is hilarious. Yeah. But what made me laugh really hard is that that's a name from a Woody Allen movie called Love and Death, which is like my favorite comedy. Oh, wow. And there's a scene in it where this guy's like, they will hold my name, you know, along with Napoleon and everyone else. Sidney Applebaum, it's like the worst name. <laughs> and so that was John, that was like an inside joke right. to me that played out like on national television of John being like, Sydney Apple Very cool. Um, and that's why I laughed. Do you think there's something about being a comedian and facing that fire that help, will help you? Or yeah, you? maybe. I mean, comedy is really tough. It's really hard, but you can't do comedy. Like I was kind of saying to you earlier, it's like the best kind of comedy is you have to get the, the reality of the drama. You're still kind of doing drama. An example I'll give is, and super bad, there's a scene where I walk in and I find McLovin in bed with a girl. <laughs> and in the script it says, Slater walks in and finds McLovin and gets furious. And so I played it for comedy. I walked in and I played it really big and I was trying to be funny and I was kicking shit and I was playing funny. And it wasn't working. And Greg Matola came over and very quietly said, hey man, that's your best friend. And walked away. And I went, oh yeah, that's my best friend. And he bailed on me, so I'm gonna play it like that. So I went in and played it like he was my best friend and suddenly it was the funniest thing in the world because it's this grown man going, why'd you bail on me? Like, why'd you do that? <laughs> you know what I mean? And it was hilarious, but you have to kind of have that to it. You know, you, can, you have marriage. to have that yeah. to it or it doesn't, yeah. it's just like nothing. You have to have some emotion to it yeah. or it's nothing. Um, you can't just be silly. It has to have some, some sort of emotion to it. I learned that from Judd and, and have a logic to it, which is what I kind of learned at SNL. Yeah. Peter know. Sellers, I mean, all the great comics had that. It's the thing, thing that those, those Waiting for Guffman and those things, that's why those movies always end in a very sweet way. You yeah. kind of uplifted when you walk out of those movies because yeah. of the emotion in it. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like there's something so great about seeing those people in Waiting for Guffman put on that show. Yeah and the joy of performing and, and how much they care about government. You know, yeah. it's like, you gotta, it's all that shit they t teach you in class of like, what's their wants, what's their this, yeah. what's that. Yeah. It's kind of true, it's kind yeah. of, like that's what I learned at South Park. When you go into South Park writer's room, like, you know, like, uh, I'm trying to think of an episode that, like we came in, there was this, this um, Matt, Matt came in and goes, I just watched this thing about the NCAA and how they don't pay their athletes. And that's fucking bullshit. And, he, and he, we talk about that for an hour. He's like, they shouldn't pay, it's just bullshit. Like they need to pay their athletes because they're making money and blah, blah, blah. And then Trey goes, okay, so what if Cartman wants to get a bunch of crack babies and make crack baby basketball? <laughs> and we do it like NCAA tournament. And he goes, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know. <laughs> and so then they start writing it out. And it's not like a linear thing. It's not like you start with point A and you get to point, you know, Z or whatever. It's like the tent pole scenes come out. So we have this scene, we have this scene, we have this scene in Act One, this scene at the end of Act Two, and these two scenes in Act Three. Okay, well, I'm going to write those. And then Trey will write those. And then he comes in and he goes, okay, so I went from here to here. How do we get from this scene in Act One? To this scene in Act Two, and, and, and then we sit and just talk it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Matt's the guy there going, no, but the point that we are making is blank. You know what I mean? And that doesn't fit into it. It's really hard. Yeah. And I think what a lot of people don't like dealing with how hard writing is. 
I love writing with a partner. I love writing with a partner because you, you get instant gratification and you instantly figure out your bad ideas. Um, Andrew Stanton at Pixar says, he has a great thing which is be wrong fast. So like if you have an idea, just write, it, write a version of it. Just write a version of it, spend a month writing a version of it and it will most likely be wrong. It will be bad. And then you'll give it to your friends and they'll be like, this sucks, you know, or whatever. That's another thing I learned was that when people give you notes on something, when they tell you what's wrong, they're usually right. When they tell you how to fix it, they're wrong. They're usually wrong. Can you say Do you know what I mean? Can you say that one more so, like, when they give you notes, so like if you go, I don't really like the relationship between the husband and the wife, um, I would have it that he was, you know, I would do it this way. So, when they say, uh, uh, I, I don't like the relationship they have with husband and wife. They're right. There is something probably wrong in that area. But then when they tell you how to fix it, it's, it's always wrong. Yeah. Like don't listen. Like once they say, here's what I would do, just turn them off because yeah. they're always wrong. Yeah. It's like it, it, it's like you got to figure it out yourself. I had a teacher once say, no one gives a fuck how you would fix their problem. You yeah, know? exactly. It's important, you know, to understand what they're trying to do and help them articulate. But that. when you show, like, write your idea out really fast. By the way, I've never had a movie produced before in my life, so I, I'm I'm still figuring I'm still figuring this shit out. <laughs> you don't out. know anything. I don't know anything. I really don't. It's true. It's a William Goldman line. No one knows anything. It's true. Yeah. I was with Akira Kurosawa. He was probably like one of my favorite filmmakers when he got his Lifetime Achievement Award. He was like 90 or something and he was like, I'm still, it basically was like, I'm still trying to figure this shit out. <laughs> you know, he made like the best movies of all time and he's like, I don't know. <laughs> what are you predisposed to do if, if you do a feature? Would you want to do drama, comedy, or is it just kind of? Know, something, this sounds so fucking pretentious, uh, but something that's just like kind of honest, that just is like wherever it goes, that's where it goes. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. That's what I love about Paul Thomas Anderson's movies, and I'm friends with Paul Thomas Anderson because he's with he's with Maya Rudolph. Maya, yeah, yeah. And, and he wrote for Maya. SNL. But that was before you probably. No, he didn't write for SNL. He did a video for SNL. Oh, okay. It was really funny with Ben Affleck um, a long time ago. But anytime I see, all we do, is he just has TCM playing in his house, 24/7, like in his kitchen. TCM is just playing all day. And he just sits and like looks at it when it's on the <laughs> And all we do is talk about old movies. I just like films that have like a real vision and honesty behind it. And it's the same thing with comedy. It's the same thing. If it's like, you can just tell when the, the stuff isn't honest and it doesn't have a point of view. The thing that we just did at SNL that I've been so proud of, and I'm like, God, that was such a smart sketch. Did you see the iPhone sketch we did? Yeah. iPhone 5, yeah. where all the people who, who make the iPhone person, yeah. the people who like... It's like the panel. Yeah, yeah, panel of like, and I was... You're I'm actually, one of the experts. I'm one of the experts. I was actually playing Simon Rich. I was doing my Simon Rich impression. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, this doesn't make sense. Um, <laughs> and Simon texted me. He was like, hilarious. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I was, do you know, and, and, and that's such a smart... That's kind of like what I mean by the South Park thing. Like that's what we try to do is like, what is your point of view, yeah. and how do you do it, and how do you do it funny, and just get knock the point home. I mean, does comedy have a short lifespan? I don't know. You know, it's like it's so hard to say. It's like, I'll, it's hard for me to say because some of the movies I think they're really good. I'm in, and so it's like not <laughs> nice. <laughs> Like I can't say I, I can't say, say I, I, I can't know. say man I think people are always going to be talking about Super Bad or Tropic Thunder or anything like that but uh, it's like oh uh, then it kind of comes off like uh. but I don't know I like when I saw those movies I was like oh man I can't believe I'm in like when I saw Tropic Thunder I was like I feel like I was just in Blazing Saddles I can't believe I'm in that movie yeah. Danny McBride and I were sitting at the premiere and we're going I cannot fucking believe we're in this movie yeah. like this is so funny I think the South Park movie and Team America are two movies that are brilliant. I think Team America yeah I think Team America is brilliant. It's, it's a, that was like yeah. being in LA at that time and being in LA and watching that began that movie yeah. and everybody's like, yeah, fuck them, yeah. Whatever. And then when it was all the actors and they were like, hey, uh, it was so funny. Yeah, but I yeah. think, again, Matt and Trey, I think the best yeah. thing, I, I did a moderation thing where I interviewed Jim Carrey, Chris Rock, and Ben Stiller and I asked them, I go, what do you guys think are the best comedies of the past 15 years? And, yeah. And uh, they, they, they said Team America, all three of them said Team America. And you'll love this, you know, the DP, the guy who shot Team America shot. Yeah, Bill Pope shot the Matrix movies. Matrix. <laughs> Bill Hader, everybody, thank you yeah. so much. Yeah.